things that are from the heart or things that are real passion of yours will always, I think, score kind of like higher eventually. It takes too long to make a movie. You've got to absolutely love what you're doing. So any of the genres that I have tackled is done out of like just uh, infatuation and obsession. I think most of the times when I make films, I'm trying to recapture thrills that I had in the cinema. The comedy comes from the characters. So I guess it's sort of if you've got the characters have good voices, their kind of like strengths and weaknesses and their attitudes are well defined, then the comedy just comes out of that. So in a way, I always think of genre films sometimes are like a Trojan horse, you know, where you could actually um, sneak in some bigger ideas uh, into sort of something that's ostensibly a, ro a zombie movie or a cop movie. I think some people kind of like get so frustrated at the process, like you got to keep plowing ahead and you got to keep finding, you know, get to the place where you're, what you're seeing in your head and what's on screen are the same thing. Personally, I make movies that I would like to see. So what I write and what I make is a film that I would like to see if I were an audience member. You know, I think back at the sort of the films that like had the most impact on me growing up that had a, a huge element of that, where the sort of the use of sound and music is sometimes the whole show. I think most of the times when I make films, I'm trying to recapture thrills that I had in the cinema. And I think the key thing is, and this is a difficult thing to do, the key thing is, is do things that you want to do, not things that you think you ought to do. I think mm -hmm. sort of like, just kind of chase after things that you think other people want to see rather than what you really want to do. Like, you know, you could certainly have success with that, but, it, but it's things that are from the heart or things that are real passion of yours will always, I think, score kind of like higher eventually. I think the only screenwriting tip that I would have that me and Simon have tried to do with each of the films is like absolutely plot it all out, kind of like, we try to plot it out on one sheet of paper. So we actually made this kind of like line of like the sort of, this is the act structure and these are the 12 pubs. So this is gonna happen at this point and this is gonna happen at this point. So we're very sort of methodical and mathematical about it because it can be a difficult thing if you're writing without a clear idea of where you're gonna go. And in fact, you know, with most of the films, um, certainly with Sean and with um, World's End, they had a very, very clear idea of what the final scene was um, and, and what that final image was gonna be. So, you know, it's good to know where you're heading so that you don't get lost and bored along the way. I don't think I've ever done it when I've been written something on my own, but me and Joe Cornish do the same thing. It's just writing out the entire story on a flip chart because then it's just like a roadmap to the entire movie. This is the flip chart that we did for Hot Fuzz and we haven't actually seen this uh, since we kind of like wrote it and um, as you'll see there's just an enormous amount of information. I think when we started this kind of, um, one of the first things we did was pulled a lot of ideas of things that we wanted to do and things about kind of the, you know, where we grew up and kind of what we wanted to do plot wise with the film. You know, if you're like sharing a, wherever you're writing, whether you're writing at home or an office or, or whatever or some kind of writing room, it's good to just have it in the corner of the room so it's always there, like, and you can just flip through the entire film. Jeez. Oh we procrastinated God. a lot. <laughs> no, it's good. We just tried to kind of like, I suppose it was like having our own version of SimCity. We tried to create our own little world. And here are lots of index cards with loads of stuff on. If, you, if you go through this, you can kind of see the entire, the well, entire film. In flip chart form. It's something like, I, I find it easier that if you keep writing out the the story over and over again, mm -hmm. eventually you'll just start writing the screenplay because the lines will just, um, <laughs> the lines <laughs> will just, you know, di dialogue starts to drive the plot points and then like, and then you've started writing the screenplay essentially. Now you, I mean, you obviously are a very prolific writer. How do you approach writing? Do you start with characters? Do you start with plot? What is your approach? I mean, um, Usually there's a storyline. I mean, certainly in, in, in some cases, the storyline is very clear in my head, as it was with Last Night in Soho. With Baby Driver, it's like I, you sort of had, had a, a, a general idea, but it kept sort of just kind of like developing. But when I'm actually writing, I, even if I have the story, a big part of it is just kind of like, um, I would call it creative procrastination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you're, like, 
in the lead up to writing, you're just like reading a lot, like reading a lot of research and listening to lots of stuff that's like, I like used to use music as inspiration. Or, you know, in, in the case of Soho, it was a lot watching a lot of films of the period, not not horror films or thrillers, but just like dramas and documentaries about the period. Right. So it's just that thing to kind of get you in the mood. And I think there's that point where you kind of keep sort of creatively procrastinating until, you know, your treatment document gets so much bigger and bigger to the point where now I'm writing the screenplay. So, it's, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's that thing is that like, um, people work in genre sometimes as a, a delivery system to get across like ideas because there's a certain audience that might watch hot fuzz or Shaun of the dead or the world's end that might not watch some like sort of like very serious minded uh movies on the same topics so in a way i always think of genre films sometimes they're like a trojan horse you know, where you could actually um, sneak in some bigger ideas uh, into sort of something that's ostensibly a, ro- a zombie movie or a cop movie or, you know, an, uh, a, a, like a robot invasion movie. And the other like sort of, and that, and that I think is also what's great about satire is that you can kind of, um, you know, you can make some serious points in something funny. And I... I, I I've always sort of believed that that's kind of like a really, um, the, uh, hopefully, you know, the movies that they're more than just what's on the surface, you know? I guess it's just like the comedy comes from the characters. So I guess it's sort of if you've got, you know, like the characters have good voices mm-hmm. and they have th- their kind of like strengths and weaknesses and their attitudes are well defined. And the comedy just comes out of that, you know. It sort of depends on what it is. I mean, in the case of things like um, Shaun of the Dead and The World's End, it's like taking real people and putting them in a fantastical situation. Right. And sort of the comedy in Shaun of the Dead and, and World's End, for example, comes from sort of real, grounded, quite naturalistic characters reacting to something absolutely insane. And that was always the thing is that that was the kind of the key thing with Shaun of the Dead when we were writing it and, and also trying to get it across to people was that we didn't want it to be broad. We wanted it to be real and the sort of like keep the situation, keep the situation serious. Mm-hmm. Like the zombies are like serious and scary and could kill you. And there's the, the zombies aren't doing anything funny. It's like the ca- the human characters are, are doing the funny stuff. But then even all of their reactions, are, we just try to ground it in what we think we would do in that situation or how kind of like useless we would be in that situation. I don't know. I think sort of like in this day and age, you have more platforms to get your work out there than when I was making, when I used to make amateur films. And I actually was very lucky that I, I, I got onto one of those competitions um, on TV. It was a, one of the first animation films that I'd made. But in this day and age, you know, you have like YouTube and Vimeo and you have a chance of like sort of if you make a short film and it works, people all over the world could see it. But I'd say that I I just think the thing to do is try and do something that's unique or something that just kind of marks you out as a little bit different. And, um, you know, it's a bit more difficult in London, actually, in terms of I was I was lucky in a way I didn't realize I was lucky at the time. But um, when I made my first film when I was 20, which is a very low budget, like Western, it was very, very silly. But like one of the, o- like the few sort of talking points about it was the fact that I'd done it in Somerset. That it was like sort of this kind of like almost like this silly, a- silly anecdotal quality to it. It was like, hey, have you heard about this kid who made this Western in Somerset? Like, so that straight away was actually be- being in a sort of small pond was actually sort of a good thing. Because, you know, then coming to London, you know, you're one of tens of thousands of aspiring filmmakers. In this exploration of, of genre, um, how do you prevent uh, deconstruction and commentary um, from being parody? I think if it's done with affection, I think that's the point. I think uh, in, the, in terms of, uh, I mean, Baby Driver is a little different, um, but it's got the same spirit of it in terms of it's done with, 
I think it's just done with love for the genre. So in that sense, I think there's a big difference between like when Shaun of the Dead came out in Hot Fuzz and people would use the word spoof, we would always mean some of the always bristle a little bit at that word because I felt like sort of some of the spoofs that were around at the same time seemed to be just um, quite, um, you know, they're just, uh, uh, they, it was like they hated the genre. So something like Scary Movie or any of those films, they seem so like they like sort of think the entire genre is dumb and like sort of unworthy and let's just kind of like rip the shit out of this kind of genre. On the flip side, I hope that something like Shaun of the Dead, we used to call them like a Valentine, is like done with such affection that really like we're making a film within that genre. And in that particular one, it's like what the characters are doing is funny and what the situation is is funny. So it becomes more situationist. So I think that's the thing is they're done with huge affection. And I think that's where it becomes something that's like sort of very heartfelt and is like, is like a, a serious entry in those movies. So that's nice to me is that like, um, in terms of like when people do lists sometimes of like the best zombie films of all time and, you know, Sean is somewhere in there. That's great because it's not kind of considered, it's considered like a film within that genre. It's not considered a spoof of that genre. Yeah. Well, is that, there's been a gradual process of, you know, really well from Sean of the Dead, but Hot Fuzz as well of, an ironic representation of the American action cinema. Yeah. And I, when I see this, I sort of start to feel like there's been a gradual, you've been very slowly coming out as an action director. <laughs> and I think, you know, for me, the action is so spectacularly well directed in, in this film. It has been, I mean, World's End, the fight scenes, I thought, you know, we talked about it after I saw it. I mean, I really love the way you put those together, but the, all of the, the foot chases, the car chases in this, it's like, oh, you really mean it. You know, you really enjoy this stuff. This is, this is great. And there's, there's something very American about that, about embracing that and just the, the showmanship of that. I think even with the previous films, the British kind of trilogy, they're all made out of affection. Like I used to always bristle when people would call them send ups because I was thinking, well, they're not like send ups because that sending up means that you're satirizing it, which in some ways makes it seem like you don't like it. Whereas like, mm-hmm. The zombie films, the cop films, the sci-fi films, I love those. They're like, I, I always saw them as Valentines. And in this one, I think it was always the intention to make something that was actually music. I mean, the, obviously there's a, su- a subjective twist to it with the music, mm. but in terms of the heist and action element is just do that kind of, you know, sort of dead ahead and play that straighter and make it more relentless. Um, I was wondering, who do you, like within the five main leads, who do you see most in yourself and who if you wanted to be who would you like to be in that like group um, of friends? I think what you end up doing is that myself and Simon put different parts of ourselves into everybody so like Eddie Marzan has that story with the bully which is a sort of an amalgamation of something that happened to me and something that happened to Simon like um, I guess there are parts of us in Gary King but then on the flip side Paddy Constantine's character has that thing where he well there's an amalgamation there because like um there's a thing where simon has been out with the best friend's sister and i had done that and then my f- other friend had been out with her as well so it created this awful like so sort of awkward like not a love triangle but like a love square so just lots of elements of different people you know and i think sort of like it's interesting with the kind of characters is even when the actors come on board Kind of the first thing we did when we rehearsed the movie is sat around and talked about being that age. They keep mentioning in the script there's this hot girl called Becky Salt that they keep mentioning. And uh, like everybody around the table had a different like girl at school that they were never with. And what's funny is like that the, uh, she, she was somebody that I, I didn't... It was the name of a girl uh, that I went to school with, except it wasn't somebody that I fancied. My friend fancied her. So when I think of the name of like a hot girl, I think of my friend going, oh my God, Becky Soul. There wasn't so. So if she ever sees the film, she's going to think that I have a crush on her. And I say, no, it's not. Nick Field had a crush on you. <laughs> it's a bit different when you have a co writer because then, then, you know, then it can be a bit more formal because, you know, with Last Night in Soho, which I wrote with Christy Wilson Cairns, she came on to write the screenplay with me at a point where I had the story sort of kind of pretty clear and it was all like mapped out. 
and tons of research but it was a matter of like then okay let's sit down and write the screenplay right so and they, when you have a partner they keep you honest is basically what you're saying <laughs> oh. I think sort of it goes both ways i mean i feel like somebody's always got to be good cop and bad cop right. anyone he, simon Pegg, and he won't he, he 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 won't he won't be annoyed that i say this and, and he cannot deny it but definitely in the writing of like sean and hot fuzz I was definitely a good cop. I was like the headmaster cracking the whip. <laughs> and Simon was the one who was kind of trying to sort of negotiate down the amount of time we spent in the writing room on a daily basis. That, <laughs> Simon is an amazing writer. So it kind of all worked out. But I always found it funny that he was always, you know, wheedling around like, hey, I might not be able to make it in until, <laughs> like, you know. So he's brilliant. He's, you know. But there are things like there's one line in the film where I was about to tweet it just as a joke, and then I stopped myself and I thought, "Oh no, I'll keep that." <laughs> like that's another thing is don't burn don't burn all your jokes on Twitter. <laughs>